Okay, guys, so this is a first video in a series of a couple that I'll do. Um, the purpose of these uh, extra credit lessons is to kind of delve a little bit deeper than what we learned in class about how to factor polynomials and find their roots. Um, the techniques can get a little bit more um, interesting and a little bit more theorems to learn and stuff so that you can do a little bit more. Um, how these videos are set up, you kind of need to do, you know, if you're going to do any of them, you kind of have to do all of them, starting with this one. Um, you wouldn't want to jump in the middle or anything. But this is our first one, so this is a good place to start if you choose to do it. So I'm going to make the notes worth 10 and the exercises worth 10, total of 20. It was worth 5 and 5, but I, after doing the lesson, I realized it might take a little longer than previously anticipated. It's not that much worse, but I just thought I'd make it more worth your while. Interested. We're going to talk about these things called conjugate roots. Um, we're going to talk about what those are, and then what we're going to do with them is they help you actually write the equation of a polynomial. So first of all, what is a conjugate is the first thing we want to address. What is a conjugate? A conjugate in mathematics, we've already seen it, is this. It's when you have two binomials, if you will, um, where one's being plus and one has a minus. Um, so that's what it is. So what's a conjugate root then? Well, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's when you have a pair of roots that are conjugates. Um, so to demonstrate what that's all about, let's go ahead and take a look at the quadratic formula. So I'm not going to ask you guys to do any problems like this. This is just a demonstration um, of what a conjugate root is. So this is a <clears throat> trinomial. We're setting it equals zero. We want to find the roots. Now you could try factoring, but it won't work because it's not factorable. The only other way to find the roots of a quadratic when it equals zero is by doing the quadratic formula. So we're going to go ahead and do that. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And then we go ahead and just work it out from there. 16 take away 24, I believe, would be negative 8. In this case, we're going to take out the negative, and we're going to break down the 8. <clears throat> and what you would end up with is 2i radical 2. And then we're going to reduce. Now, this is a conjugate root. These are roots. Now, they're imaginary roots also, but they're conjugates. So let me show you. We have negative 2 plus i root 2, but we also have negative 2 minus i root 2. So these are roots, right? Because that's what the quadratic formula helps you find. But the two roots that we get are conjugate roots. And the quadratic formula always gives you conjugate roots. Okay? So um, a conjugate root then is, is anytime you have to use the quadratic formula to find it, you know, whether anytime you have like a square root or an imaginary number, you're going to get conjugate roots. So if a polynomial. has any irrational or imaginary roots, they will come in conjugate pairs. So for instance, an irrational root is one where you have a plus or minus b radical c or a plus or minus bi. This is imaginary. This is irrational. Irrational means you have a square root that can't be reduced anymore. So anytime you have an irrational or imaginary root which comes from doing the quadratic formula, you're always going to get a plus version and a minus version of the same thing, and those are conjugate pairs. Now, if you ever get something um, you know, like a normal root, just a normal number, 
those don't come in conjugate pairs, just so you know. So for instance, like if you were solving, let's, let's, let's look at this one, like x squared plus 5x plus 6. Well, you could do the quadratic formula if you want, or you could solve it by factoring. But the roots that you would get if you tried solving this is you would get um, negative 2 and negative 3. Those are not conjugate pairs because those are not irrational numbers and they're not imaginary numbers. It's only when you have the square root answers or the i answers. Those are the ones that come in conjugate pairs. Okay, So rational roots do not come in conjugate pairs. So we should probably write that little note there. Rational roots, those are things like normal numbers, like fractions or, or integers. Rational roots do not come in conjugate pairs, necessarily. I'm going to put necessarily because they can, but that's just not the rule. They don't have to. Whereas when you're talking about irrational or imaginary ones, they have to because they come out of the quadratic formula, which kind of forces them to be that way. Okay, so what are we going to do with this information? All right, guys, so this is what we're going to be using the conjugate theorem to do here. It says, write a polynomial function of least degree. I'll explain what that means later. For now, it doesn't really matter. Um, with integral coefficients, that's... Nah, who cares about that? With the given zeros, that's important. So the big things we're paying attention to is we're writing a polynomial function using the given zeros. These are the zeros. These are the places where it would touch the x-axis. Okay. Um, now, obviously, imaginary numbers don't touch the x-axis. We've talked about that before. But um, anyway, now a few lessons back, um, I want to say 6.3, but I'm not entirely sure. We learned something called the factor theorem. The factor theorem tells me that if this is a root, then I take that number and I put it in parentheses with an x and with an opposite sign, and that's one of my factors. So there's one of my factors. So I'm going to turn that into a factor. Same thing here with this one. And now that's a factor. But let's put the conjugate theorem to use for us. And here, here's where the conjugate theorem comes in handy. We talked about with the conjugate theorem, anytime you have an imaginary or an irrational root, this is an imaginary one, then they always come in conjugate pairs. Okay, so this has a pair. The pair that goes with it is negative 2i. They always come in pairs. Now, if you want to think of, make it look more familiar, we could think of it like this. This one would be like 0 plus 2i. This one would be like 0 minus 2i. So you guys see how those are conjugate pairs. We don't really need to write the zero, but there you have it. So that's where the conjugate theorem comes into play. So I'm going to highlight that there. You know, I can never spell guarantees. Guarantees. That. So the conjugate theorem guarantees that we have that one. So guess what that gives us? That gives me another factor. So I'm going to put that in there but with an opposite sign. So now I have three factors. And those three factors are my polynomial in factored form. Um, now, they want us to, um, what they're going to want us to do, though, is they're going to want us to multiply it all together. But before I start multiplying stuff, because that's all old news, I want to make sure you guys got it. So step one, find whatever irrational or imaginary numbers there are write the conjugate pair that goes with it, then turn those zeros into factors. The next thing you do after that is you multiply everything together. So I'm going to start by doing the conjugate pairs. Conjugate pairs are pretty cool. You're pretty much just going to do the difference of squares here. Um, you could do like a, a table or a foil, whatever method you want to. Um, I'll, I'll do it the long way, but I'll also show you guys the short way just to refresh your memories. The long way always works. Shortcuts only work sometimes. Notice these cancel. And so what I'm left with is x squared minus 4i squared. Now, now the, the short way is, is that when you have conjugate pairs like this, simple binomials, you just square the first term, you square the last term, and you put a minus between them. 
That way you don't have to do the box method. But I showed you the box because there's going to be some problems where the box is helpful. So just read it. Now something else that you guys need to remember is that um, I squared is a real number. I squared is actually a negative 1. And that means what I have here then is negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. No more imaginary numbers. And then we're going to do another box to multiply those together or another FOIL method, whatever you want to call it. But there you have it. So we'll go ahead and box that one up now. Mm, don't like how I'm writing that. Let me write the box first. So we have x minus 1, and then x squared plus 4. And then putting it in descending order, we have the power of 3 first, followed by the power of 2, followed by the x, followed by the constant, and there's my polynomial. So that polynomial would have these three roots. So let's let's review the steps here, okay? So step one was we found the conjugate pair, right? Step two, we want to write those roots as factors using the factor theorem. Step three, multiply it all together and you've got your answer, okay? Let's take a look at another example here. Um, now, I'm doing more than one example because every example that I'm throwing at you here has a little bit of a twist to it. So let's look at all of them. Okay, so here's this one. So let's, let's see. I have two roots here. I've got negative 3, and I've got negative 3 plus the square root of 7. Which one of these can I apply the conjugate theorem to? Well, it's the one that has the square root in it. That's the irrational one. So my, the conjugate that would go with that would be negative 3 minus the square root of 7. So that's step 1. Use the conjugate theorem to find the conjugate pair. Next, turn your factors into, I'm sorry, your roots into factors. So I'm going to put the 3 in here with an opposite sign, so it's a plus 3. This one's a little bit weird. Um, so we're going to put this one in here with opposite signs. So it's going to be um, plus 3 minus radical 7. And then I'm going to put this one in here with opposite signs, plus 3 plus 7, square root of 7. All right. So now the reason why I wanted to do an extra example with this one in play is, um, well, first of all, recognizing that this is another conjugate pair because it's not imaginary but this, this time, but it is irrational. That's what irrational ones look like. They'll look like square roots instead of imaginary numbers. The other reason, though, is because of this multiplication here. This is a little bit weirder. Notice that you can kind of think of this as though there are three terms. And so that's how I'm going to treat it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 3 by 3 box. Or you could do whatever sort of multiplication trick you already know of. But I like the box. So on the top, I'm going to put x3 radical 7, negative. And then the other one will be x3 positive radical 7. So this one I put down this side. This one I put along the top. And just go ahead and fill it in. Uh, chicka, 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 chicka. Negative radical 7 x, right? The good news is, well, let me finish this first. Negative times negative is negative, right? And radical 7 times radical 7 is 7. Now, here's kind of the cool thing about this. Usually, multiplying with square roots kind of sucks because you get a bunch of nasty-looking numbers. But here's the good news. All the nasty ones go away, like this radical 7 and this radical 7 cancel out. This 3 radical 7 and this 3 radical 7 cancel out. And you're just left with nice numbers. So it'll, it's going to work out that way. So we have x squared in the top left corner there. And then we can combine these x's together to make 6x. And then I can combine this 9 with this negative 7 to make 2. And there you go. And now we've got to do a box again. This time I'm going to multiply that trinomial 
by the binomial. And I'll take care of that one. So x squared plus 6x plus 2, x plus 3, and just go ahead and take it home. So I've got my final answer. There's going to be x cubed. Put those together to get 9x squared. Put these together to get 20x. And then your 6. And there's your polynomial. So why, why does something I'm going to address is why does it say least degree? Well, um, technically, it could be the case that this root is repeated twice, like there could be two roots of negative 3, which means you could have had another x plus 3 here. And all that would have done is made your polynomial bigger. Um, and your final power, which is also known as a degree, would be bigger. But basically, we're just going to assume there's no repeated roots here. So that's what they mean by least degree. All right, I think that's it. I don't think any more examples will add much to your knowledge base. You don't have to take notes on this one if you think you got it already, but I'll do one more. This one is just another example. Um, it's got an imaginary and right. So step one, identify which one will have a conjugate pair. It's the imaginary one in this case. And the conjugate pair that would go with that would be 3 plus 3i. You're going to turn these into factors. That's step two. Just change the signs. And then you're going to make a 3 by 3 box for the two pairs here that have three terms in them. So x times x is x squared, and so on. Okay, so once again, um, you can expect all the weird ones to go away, like the 3ix and the 3ix cancel, the 9i and the 9i go away. This one's weird, and it's going to go away, but not yet. Um, let's go ahead and write this out. So first of all, we have x squared, and then we have these two, which make minus 6x. Then we have plus 9. And then we have minus 9i squared. Now that i is going to go away now because we talked about i squared before. i squared is a negative 1. And if this is a negative 1, then negative 1 times negative 9 is positive 9. And so what we have there really is 9 plus 9, which is 18. So all it does basically is changes. That i squared just changes the sign of the number that it's in front of. And then we put the 9s together to get 18. And then we do one more box after that, and we're home free. So that's that's the conjugate root theorem. Um, and it basically just states that anytime you have an irrational or an imaginary root, they always come in pairs, conjugate pairs. Once again, that only applies to irrational or imaginary roots. And since we know those roots, we can go ahead and work backwards and turn these roots into a polynomial. 36. So final answer here will be x cubed. Combining those, we get minus 4x squared. Combining those, we get 6x. And combine, well, 36 doesn't combine with anything. So there we go. Okay. That's the end of that lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. The next lesson to follow will build on this knowledge to continue helping us work with polynomials.